Greetings and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Dungeons. Alright, so we've pretty much finished the uh, introduction slash tutorial level. Well, we've met all kinds of characters that are of little consequence. I mean, that's really my biggest complaint with this game. That it just lacks character. And it's not to say that there aren't characters in it, it's just you care so very little about them. And the worst of all of this at this moment is really Mr. Sidekick, who's given the unfortunate role of being both the narrator, your subor subordinate, and strangely enough, your superior, since he seems to be giving out all the orders. And this just, just, just doesn't quite work, it doesn't gel, and does it help that he's voice acted in a way that really grates on you if you pay attention to it. So I usually just block it out. Because uh, what he says most of the time is either not really useful or a really, really poor attempt at humor. Anyway, let's just have a look at the mission. The, uh, <coughs> Mr. Sarkic already out read out what it says here, but that's not really important. What's more important is these challenges over here for the next mission. Now, most of these challenges you actually don't need to do. They're just optional. They're useful. All this, all completely completing any of the missions is useful in some way. But there's only a couple you actually really I recommend you do if you play this game. Which is basically the ones where you get skill points. So, a chest worth nightmares, destroy the magic chest. I need more ma open to open entrances for three skill points. Do the obvious. Find the seats of Discord, so basically you just complete the level. And Master of Souls. Complete four soul energy. Which gives me as, uh, skill points and attribute points. The rest of these uh, qu uh, achievements, you I suppose you could call them, give you a scroll, which is basically just a one-shot spell, which is occasionally useful. Most of these things you will either get just through play, because uh, dig at least 30 fields, that's so easy to do. Then yeah, Defeat at least some heroes, sure, why not? Kill at least 12 monsters, that possibly can happen, I don't know for sure. Never have more than 100 of... Never, never have 150 or more gold. That is... That's a bit tricky. Because I tend to want to have more than... Uh, more gold than that. And Goblin Drive and all that. Uh, most of these quests are not really consequential. Let's just start. We've waited long enough. Ah, Master, I hope you've recovered somewhat from our escape. Your dungeon heart is already pulsating with an ominous light and is eagerly awaiting souls. Uh, I think it would be best if you were to start work immediately, Master. Those disgusting halflings provide entire countries with their disgusting delicacies, making the surface dwellers fat and happy. We are practically obliged to put an end to that. The seeds of discord will ensure that the halflings will soon have other things on their minds. <laughs> Master, I would suggest that you first bring all of the monster shelters under your control. That should make it easier to search for the seeds of discord. Unfortunately, the monsters in the surrounding area are uh, you know, extremely uncooperative. I'm afraid you'll have to pound some sense into them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it teaches us about that. Now, we have only one spell available right now, the Convert Pentagram, I think. Now, we have a couple of spells. We see through the eyes of the Lord. Which can be useful because it gives you a strength, agility, and just a constitution boost, which I'll explain later. The teleport to dungeon heart spell, which is always useful to have. The summon goblin spell, which is uh, useful for the ex predicted reasons, although at the moment it's disabled because I don't have any goblins yet. And basically, you just control your dungeon lord during play. Your dungeon lord is basically your most imposed in, uh, important units. And since I just need to kill these bats over here... Vampire bats. 
and they have an entire thing uh, about them written here, but, well, I'll just get to that in a moment. Let's just convert this pentagram for a moment. And that's also a problem again with the personality of these uh, of the monsters. They have none. If you compare it to Dungeon Keeper, each new monster you got got an introduction Excellent of some sort. Workmaster, just look how your area of influence has increased. Yet remember that you're very vulnerable when converting a pentagram. During the process, even a lousy bat can pose a real danger and can interrupt your spell. Master, you just acquired a new monster shelter in your area of influence. A monster shelter gives a specific type of monster, well, shelter. Once you bring a shelter under your control, you can build pentagrams for that particular type of monster. Furthermore, Shelters increase your population points, which you need to build pentagrams. Master, next you should build some pentagrams of your own to expand your area of influence and bring the remaining monster shelters under your control. This, however, requires gold. The best way to get gold is from heroes who come in through an entrance into your dungeon. Tutorials, kind of that's just... Anyway, as I was saying, you get a brief introduction to a new monster, their main strengths, their main weaknesses, and the overall role they play. None of that is being done here. If we can see, we have access to potentially three monsters, although at the moment we only have access to Vampire Bats because of the old tower, which gives us eight population points and Vampire Bats. Um, and I think we have eight population points at the moment because I have this shelter, so not much. But yeah, the vampire bats are small, bloodthirsty beasts who love to sink their teeth into heroes. Unfortunately, they do have one problem, and that is their high mortality rate. A hero's sword, or even a strong wind, can put one of these creatures out of its misery faster than you can say, Heads up! While vampire bats are rather weak in combat, pentagrams for this brand of monster reveal a particularly large area. See, it would be nice if that speech was actually included in some sort of voiceover, just so I knew what they were for. Anyway, we have some stairs down, those are really just not important, they're usually an indication of some future quest that we don't get to. Uh, and we have one room available to us right now. But right now, we need money, so... Where do we get money? Open the hero's entrance. Alright, we can do that. The hero's entrance. Now, only adventurers will come through here. Adventurers are basically... Master, like look! A goblin has been imprisoned there! While these cute little characters aren't particularly blessed with brains, they do provide a lot of muscle power. If you free him, he will surely serve you well. Yes, yes he will. Excellent work, Master. Now it would be best if you were to pull back a bit and let the heroes stream into your dungeon. For heroes not only bring gold into your dungeon, but soul energy as well. Although heroes only generate soul energy when amusing themselves in your dungeon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Goblins can dig. Yes, I know that. So I'll just have to break open this prison cell, which is specially constructed for that purpose. And now he's free! Yay! Oh, Master! See how grateful the creature is! It fawns over you as if you were its mother! You could probably have him jump off a cliff, and he'd do it with a smile! <laughs> but of course, we still need him for your sinister plans! 
dig through to this treasure chamber so that the heroes from the first entrance can take their fill and collect valuable soul energy. Alright, we'll do that. Yes, that's fine. And let's create more goblins. Yeah. There's also these bags of gold on the ground that we'll want. Alright, that that means basically a hero has entered the dungeon. Oh look! There's the first hero already! Just let him greedily stuff his bags full of gold, Master. You know how it goes. Satisfied heroes have more of that lovely soul energy. Yes, and if you wouldn't bang on about that every damn time, that would be way more amusing. However, uh, I will need to get this area under my control. Alright, so we here soon. have an adventure, which is oh, very friend. easily satisfied. So let's go kill it. And she shields herself oh, the Sweet help. soul energy. Master, when you defeat a hero, you only get a fraction of their soul energy. But the prison will let you squeeze out the rest of it too. <laughs> By the way, Master, there are different types of prison cells. Not only do they differ in size, but there is also a difference in how fast they squeeze the soul energy out of the heroes imprisoned in them. Oh yes, please put him into prison quickly. You see, all that lovely soul energy diminishes over time and that would be such a waste. Right. Now I just go over here, away from all of this. There's not really anything else I can reach at the moment. I'll just build a few more of these pentagrams. <sighs> but basically, that is the entire gameplay loop within this game. Thrilling, isn't it, Master? You have just completed an achievement for which you have received a scroll. Yeah. Excellent work, Master. The soul energy is now slowly being squeezed out of the heroes. Let us carry on and open another entrance. Have your goblin dig a tunnel through to connect it to your dungeon. Master, look, the gate. It's opening. You obviously did something right. Yeah, well, it's not difficult to do things wrong at this point. All right. If you'd be so kind as to die. Now, adventurers, like I said, are really the weakest heroes. They don't really uh, have a chance of killing me. And I don't want to fight them, because that would be silly. So I'll just have them fight bats. Now, adventurers really only have one desire, and that is treasure. Alright. So I've reached the maximum number of goblins. So I really probably should do something. The game doesn't explain this part particularly all too well. For instance, you have lots of things in on the screen that you might need to pay attention to. Like for instance, building prison cells. But mostly these buttons below here. Because you have here, have you, you've got the quests that you need to do. And the challenges that you can do. The uh, goblins that I have in my dungeon. The heroes Master, that are in 
You have just received a skill point and attribute points. Yes, 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 yes. We'll get to that in a moment. The heroes that are in my dungeon. And dialogues that happened. The spell book, which I already showed you with a couple of scrolls that I've earned because of my impressive accomplishments. And then these buttons that are lit up right now. Now, you may notice that they are lit up. I, for the longest time, did not notice them light up in dungeon. Mostly because they are still greyed out, even if they are lit up a bit. But when you click on them, you get this! And I suddenly got WOW flashbacks when I saw this. Not particularly good ones either. But yeah, basically you've got a skill tree for your uh, dungeon lord, which you can fill out whatever way you like. Now, uh, for this particular run through, I'm just gonna stick with the method I know works, which is basically going physical. Now I've got one point, so I'll want to... A new spell has been added to your spell book, master. I basically want to have the Berserk Rage, and we also have some attribute points. Well, we have one. And you have in you can put them in four things like strength, basically increasingly increases increases the minimum and maximum damage, agility, which increases both my attack and defensive values. It also affects your ability to hit your enemy, so you really shouldn't underestimate it and put everything into strength, because you might be able to hit hard, but if you can't hit whatever you're trying to hit, then that strength counts for nothing. Intelligence basically uh, gives you. Uh, more mana and effect more effective spells. See, we just failed the challenge because we have got too much gold. But I don't care because I am not in interested in getting rid of all that. Alright, let's just get rid of that for the moment. For now, I'll just put a point into strength. And constitution, which increases my hit points and my resistance, is basically how well I defend myself with physical. Mi Magical or traps. Right now that doesn't matter because I have not enough prestige. Because I don't have enough soul energy. Now if at all possible you don't want to let heroes escape your dungeon. Ah, master, that old bag of bones sometimes called the Zombie King seems to have uh, something to say. Uh, might I remind you that the old skeleton is at least temporarily until you've accumulated enough power still your boss? Did I have a good sleep? Oh, where are my skeletons? They were just there a minute ago. Um, Master, it looks like a few unfriendly looking skeletons just entered your dungeon. Really? Wonderful. Please take care of it. Even if they are brainless, I cannot tolerate that kind of insubordination in my army. You'd best strike down this mutinous pack quickly, Master, before they can do any more damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's... What was I talking about? Uh, yeah, the attribute points. <coughs> it would have been such a more better uh, design idea if they just, you know, made these buttons flash or something rather than just light up. Because in the heat of battle, when I'm basically looking over everything on the minimap and the regular map, I will never notice these. I will never notice these. Alright, so we killed enough monsters for the bronze challenge there. Yeah, that is fine. Not all that interested in that. Since we are still trying to dig our way to here. Now, let's also dig here. And... I can raise my goblin limit by spending a little bit of uh, soul energy, which I have plenty of, so 
Let's just get my goblin limit up. And place down a few more cells. Master, you've built a new prison. Excellent! Now your dungeon has room for even more customers. <laughs> Excellent work, Master. The entrance is now connected to your dungeon. Before you open the entrance, however, you should spend some time preparing to meet the expected hero's needs. If you look around, I'm sure you'll notice that treasure chest over there. Unfortunately, it's still empty and must first be filled by your servants. However, your servants only fill treasure chests that are within your area of influence, Master. This is actually a rather wise idea. Or they would just trundle your hard-grafted gold to any old opponent in the area. Build some pentagrams to bring the treasure chests into your area of influence and your goblins will start to build them, Master. You know, at least Gnarl didn't insult my intelligence the whole time. <sighs> well, anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. See you all next time.